question number one. The points K10, 2, 7, and 1, 4 lie on a straight line. So that's stating that they are collinear. Find the value of K. So if the three points are collinear, that means the slope of these two is equivalent to the slope of these two. So plugging into the slope formula, y2 minus y1, so 7 minus 10 over 2 minus k. That's equivalent to y2 minus y1, 4 minus 7 over 1 minus 2. I'm going to simplify. 7 minus 10 is negative 3 over 2 minus k equals negative 3 over negative 1. I want to do cross product or cross multiplication when I have two equivalent ratios. So here I have negative 3 times 2 minus k, which is negative 6 plus 3k equal negative 3 times negative 3 is 3. Add the 6 over, we get 3 times k is equal to 9. Divide by 3 and k is equivalent to 3. Number two, the map shows a straight highway between two towns. Highway planners want to build two new rest stops between the towns so that the two rest stops divide the highway into three equal parts. Find the coordinates of the point at which the rest stops should be built. So if you have a highlighter, we want to highlight that these rest stops are going to divide the highway into three equal parts or thirds. Okay. I want to take a look at my slope. What's my rise over run from Ashton to Bed Bedford? So rest stop number one is going to be one third of the way from Ashton to Bedford. So looking at the slope change of y over change of x equals, well the two points Ashton is located at negative 3, negative 2 and Bedford is located at 3, 3. So change of y over change of x, that's going to be 3 minus a negative 2 over 3 minus a negative 3 and I get a slope of 5, 6. Now I, want, I don't want to simplify, okay, I just want to remind you of that even though you can't even simplify 5, 6. But now I take one third of 5 and one third of 6. I can't take one third of 5 so I'm going to leave it at 5 thirds, but I can take one third of 6 which is 2. So now I need to um, look at my two points, so from Ashton, so from this point, I'm going to add 2 to my x-coordinate. I'm going to add 5 thirds to the y-coordinate. So I'm going to do it horizontal as I don't have much room. So negative 3 plus 2 and then negative 2 plus 5 thirds. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. I need to change this to a denominator of 3, so times 3 times 3. And this is negative 6 over 3 plus now 5 over 3, which gives me rest stop number 1 at negative 1, negative 1 third. So rest stop number 1. Rest stop number 2 is going to be 2 thirds of the way, or distance, from Ashton to Bedford. So again, looking at change of y over change of x, I'm going to use the slope already. I found the slope above in doing the work for rest stop number 1. That's 5, 6. Now I'm going to take 2 thirds of 5 and 2 thirds of 6. I can't take 2 thirds of 5, so I'm going to leave that as 10 thirds, but 2 thirds of 6 is 4. Again, adding to the 
Ashton coordinates. I have, again, I'm going to add 4 to the x, so negative 3 plus 4. And then 2, the y value of negative 2, I'm going to add 10 thirds. Using what we said above, I can, negative 3 plus 4 is 1, but 2 I can rewrite as negative 6 over 3 plus 10 over 3. And when I add that, we're going to get rest stop number 2 at 1, 4 thirds. Number 3. Find the coordinates of a line that is the perpendicular bisector of JP. So I'm going to sketch segment JP. Coordinates of J are 0, 5. Coordinates of P are 4, negative 5. I'm going to write the equation of the perpendicular bisector. Which is here in orange. Now, given the endpoints of the green segment, how can I write the equation of the orange? Well, I know that it goes through the midpoint of JP as this point is on both lines. So I'm going to start by finding the midpoint of JP. So average the x's, average the y's, so 0 plus 4 over 2 and negative 5 plus 5 over 2 to give me a midpoint of 2, 0. So I have a point on this orange line. Now, in order to write the equation, which we use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, I have a point. Now I need to find the slope. Well, given the coordinates of JP, I know if I'm writing the perpendicular bisector, the slope of the orange line would be the negative reciprocal of the slope of JP. So the slope of JP equals negative 5 minus 5 over 4 minus 0. Negative 10 over 4 is negative 5 halves. But the perpendicular bisector is going to have a slope that's the negative reciprocal. So for the perpendicular bisector, my slope's going to be, when the gate is negative, it's positive. Take the reciprocal of 5 halves, we get 2 fifths. Now substituting in this equation, using this point and this slope. So I'm going to have y minus 5 equals m times x minus x1, which is not... Let me stop there, and I apologize, I did make a mistake. In using the coordinates of the midpoint, not the point on the line, this is my x1, y1. So it should be y minus 0 equals m times x minus x1, which is 2. y minus 0 is y, so distributing, we get 2 fifths x minus four fifths. Number four. Number four, it's given that angle one is congruent to angle two, so it's good to mark those. And what I want to show is that angle three is congruent to angle four. So with a proof, your first step is always to write the givens. So angle one is congruent to angle 2. Now, with nothing else marked or given in the picture, I'm not told that I have any other congruent angles besides 1 and 2 or any parallel lines, but since angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, I know that these two lines are going to be parallel. So here's my transversal. So number two is going to be line PQ is parallel to line RS because if a transversal intersects 
two lines and forms congruent alternate interior angles, then the lines are parallel. Again, when you're using that statement, you want to be sure to mention your transversal, that you have congruent angle pair, and be sure to be specific in naming your angle pair. So now if I know that PQ is parallel to RS, now I know that angle 3 and angle 4 are congruent because they are corresponding angles. So number 3 would be our statement, angle 3 congruent to angle 4. So I've just proven and finished the proof. And that's because if, because I just said here the lines are parallel, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then I can say that corresponding angles are congruent. So in the first case, I was stating that they were parallel, so then it becomes after then I talk about them being parallel. Now that I have them parallel, for my last statement, I can say if I have parallel lines, I then have congruent angle pairs. Last one, the construction. Construct line Y perpendicular um, to line K through point P. So your first step with the compass is to put the point on P, and I want to make an arc that intersects the given line. Once again, this gives you a segment, okay, with the two arcs as boundaries. So it gives you this segment from here to here, and then I'm going to bisect that segment. But since I already have point P, I don't need both of the axes. So on the opposite side of point P, I need that intersection which gives me the other point through which I draw my line. So I make an arc here, putting the compass on the other end point of that segment, and I draw another arc. It's through these two points now I can draw my line. Be sure to draw a line and to label it Y as it said to draw a line through point B perpendicular to the given. So there's my line. Once again, I'm going to add the arrows the line extends forever in both directions, and I'm going to label it Y.